Sarah here from the Cherry on Top Design Team. I'm going to be playing with some gel presses today. So I have a speedball roller, uh, brayer, speedball brayer. I have some tags, some um, paint brushes, and I'm just showing you here that if you don't have tags, you can use some tag dies. And we're going to be playing with gel presses. So Cherry on Top has a lot of gel presses in stock. I chose this set to play with today. Gel presses are like this jelly material and you can make the coolest things with them. I'm just showing you here. We're going to be playing with some uh, Catherine Puller inks. I grabbed a bunch of colors, but we're not going to be using all of those for sure. I'm just showing you just a range of colors you could use if you wanted to. And then I also have some watercolors here we're going to be playing with. So I'm going to show you how to use a gel press and what kind of fun things you can kind of do with it. Right? Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put my gel press on top of a piece of white cardstock just so you guys can see it um, pretty clearly. So we're going to start with the square gel press. Square, they come in squares, rectangles, circles, so many. We're going to try to create with some blue for this one. So I have... Catherine Puller ink in stone blue and hot tub. And I'm just going to get some ink onto the brayer and then adhere it to the gel press. And then I'm going to kind of wash my brayer off on some scrap cardstock. I keep scrap cardstock beside my desk every time I play with my gel press, just because um, you can rub it off and reuse it and it turns out really cool. You're going to see that in a little bit with another one. So the idea behind a gel press is that you can layer up medias. You can layer up stencils, you can layer up inks, and you can create your own kind of fun mixed media patterns. So for this one, for my first kind of pull here, I'm going to grab lots of blues different color blues. I have some water nearby. You can see that my Akiritake watercolors are much, much loved. <laughs> and I am going to splatter on some different colors. This is a really easy, easy way to get a fun background. You can use them for the backgrounds of cards. You can use them for lots of things. We're going to use tags today simply because that's what I had handy. And, uh, but you could use scrap paper. There's so many, many ways you can um, do these things. So I am gonna do blue watercolor and I'm tapping it on. I'm going to do some white pearlescent and white watercolor too. And then I'm gonna press the tag into this block really, really well and pull it up and we're gonna have a beautiful design. Super easy and so fun. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna actually pull from the bottom of the gel press here too. Just give me one second. I don't wanna waste what is left on that gel press. So I just turned the tag over and pulled another one from the bottom. And then we kind of have this kind of look and we're going to use that tag. I'm going to show you how to kind of blend out those colors. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on using these gel presses. Yeah. Gel presses are super easy to clean. You guys just grab some baby wipes, wipe them off and move on. Uh, so next we're going to use this triangle one, which I think is so cool. I love this set in the shop that has these three different shapes. The shapes are small, so you're working with a small area. Uh, but that also means that you are have easy cleanup and a bit more control. This product was super duper new to me. This is actually only the second time that I've ever used my gel process. So that gives you a great idea of how user friendly and easy that they are because I was able to get some great results. Now check this out. Do you see the triangle? Isn't that so cool? I'm going to show you this too. I love that. Uh, so I used the brayer. I put some, some yellow onto my triangle. And then when I grabbed my scratch paper and kind of like just got the extra ink off my brayer, I ended up with this super cool design. I love that. It's like a two for one. Now I want to add some purple to this. Yes. 
Before you ask, yes, purple and yellow are going to make brown. But that's okay. And in the end, you'll see that actually we're going to play up that bit of brown. And we're not going to get a brown brown. It's going to be like this burgundy brown. Um, but I knew that going in. Honestly, this tag <laughs> turned out to be my absolute favorite finished product. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to splatter some purple and on top of that. Now I'm going to line the triangle up with the bottom of my tag. I'm gonna place the tag down on the gel press, push it in, pull it off, and voila. I am also adding some pearlescent white. I added white pearlescent uh, watercolor to all of these gel presses, and at the end, when you see the photos of the finished product, you'll see all of that pearlescence in the close-ups. So now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna grab some purple ink and I'm gonna ink up this triangle with the purple ink. And then I'm going to do the splatters, again, the white pearlescent, and then I'm gonna also add some yellow splatters. I'm doing the opposite of what I did before. For the, the first um, triangle we pulled, I did yellow and then layered the purple on top. For this triangle, we're going to start with a base of purple and then layer the yellow on top and the pearlescent on top. And it's going to give us a totally kind of different look. So I'm just splattering. I used a paintbrush I had handy. I have watched some tutorials online and I think a fan brush would work a little bit better. So that's on my to purchase list for another time. But like I said, I wanted to do this before I got really good with them because I wanted to show you that right straight out of the box without um, a lot of practice, you can get really great results like right away. There's no need, there isn't a ton, there isn't, um, what's the word, learning curve. There isn't a big learning curve to this. So now I have this tag which has the two triangles. We're gonna let that aside to dry. So of course, the longer I work with them, the better my results are gonna be, but you can use them, like I said, straight out of the box, and uh, they are super fun. So I am gonna clean the purple ink off the brayer. I wanted to be very sure I had all the purple ink off, so I got a paper top, I got a baby wipe, and just kind of cleaned off more of that purple ink. Okay, so now we're gonna play with the circle one. This is a pink ink, this is Pink Champagne from Katherine Pooler, and we're going to go ahead and the same thing. We're going to load our brayer up and we're going to go ahead and, and then I'm going to go ahead and add that beautiful pink champagne ink to my gel press. Now I'm going to do something a little different with this circle. I grabbed a clean foam for the ink blending tool and I grabbed some Distress Oxide ink in Picked Raspberry. Again, there are better tools for this. There's little like spongy smoothie things. I don't have those. Um, and I'm just doing half the circle because I know that my end result, I want the circle to kind of, kind of run off the edge of the tag. So now I'm gonna go in with the watercolors and I don't believe I use pink. I think I just use white pearlescent watercolor and then straight white watercolors onto this one. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't use any of the uh, pink watercolor, but perhaps I did. Like I said, really, um, I am totally a new person to this, so I will get better as I go along. And maybe we'll do like an advanced gel press video for Cherry on Top at some point, but for this one, this is for beginners. So look how pretty that ended up being. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna do to finish these tags off. I've let them dry completely. We're gonna start with this large one. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my life-changing brushes and some tumbled glass Distress Oxide ink. I'm just gonna go around all of the edges of this tag. This just adds a little bit of something extra. The gel press will get you started right? It'll get you started with these beautiful kind of model designs, and then you can build on top of them. So I'm just going to go around and actually, and because the um, top portion of that tag, that was the first pull, so it's much more vibrant than the bottom. Uh, it's okay. We're going to play it, play that up in our finished project, actually. 
take a paintbrush that just has a bit of water and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of smudge together those two areas of the tag. This is just clean water and it's just going to kind of give it more of a cohesive look and a bit of an ombre design in the end. And then we're gonna finish this tag off with some white acrylic paint watered down at, with some splatters and some splatters of turquoise gloss acrylic paint as well. So we're just gonna splatter both of those onto our tag and we're gonna set this tag aside to dry and add finishing touches to our last two. This is our triangle tag and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and kind of, we have this beautiful kind of goldish brown color that is on this tag where the purple and the yellow collided and we are going to go ahead and again we're going to use our life-changing brushes and I'm going to give this a beautiful edge using Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink. So I had a definite plan for this tag. <laughs> True story, I knew where this tag was going. I knew what products I was using with it. Um, so that's what made me decide that the best way to kind of finish this one up was with the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. And it just adds that bit of um, antiqueness to this tag, which works perfectly for our end project. I'm also gonna go ahead and add just a bit more acrylic splatters. We've got some purple splatters going on. Happy accident, because happy accidents happen when you're making things with these gel presses and getting a bit messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just splatter some white acrylic paint. I'm getting it to the right consistency right now so I can get the kind and type of splatters that I want. And it's a subtle look, but you can see them in the end result too. To finish off our third tag, I am taking just the tiniest bit of this Distress Oxide and Picked Raspberry. And I'm just adding a really, really small amount just around the edges. So this is a really, really kind of subtle look, but it's going to add a lot to our finished project. And here is our finished projects with those tags that we created. This one became a slimline card uh, with some balloons and sequins. You can see there that beautiful shimmer from the pearlescent watercolor paint. This one became just a note card. We added some stamping on top of the tag and used that as the main focus of our card. This one became a beautiful tag for a gift. This uses the brand new P13 uh, Forest Tea Party set. And now you understand why I was so happy to add that brown to the edges. I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial on beginning using Cheez-It Gel Press, and I'll see you all again next month. Bye!